Hello everyone, today we'll be doing a CSRF mitigation and attack demo. We'll be going over mitigation first. So how a mitigation looks like is that suppose you're on a malicious website and they try to submit bad data and when they submit it, a CSRF attack basically means that the request is forged. So that means the cookies are actually indeed transferred or, you know, within the request. Now this is how I've mitigated it. The mitigation works. The route is protected, so we're good, and I educate the user. We'll be going over how I did all of this, so the CSRF protection, and also also the what you should do to handle the errors when, when the user encounters them. Let's get, oh, I was gonna upload one of these videos, actually. I have to re-record it again. This is my last re-record, by the way. If we, what we do is we start with importing the Flask WTF module. So you need to install that with pip, which is pip install, you know, that, you just copy and paste that, or, you know, requirements.txt, minus r requirements.txt if you still are working on the app. Next we have the import. So create a file called modules.csrf.py. This is where we'll you know, create the variable for CSRF protection. And why we do this is so that we can use the CSRF module or variable in any of our other files or blueprint files, not just our main application. This is important because, it's important because you might need to exempt certain routes in the blueprint and not in the app. And if you do it the if you do it this first way, you won't be able to do it like that. So this is the documentation. So if you just do it like this, you won't be able to do it. So that's why I'm recommending this way. We import the CSRF variable and the CSRF error. This is so that we can later handle the error. You can read it right there. And the variable is the CSRF protection variable. And following their example, we do the in the app. You wanna do it after the configuration update with the secret key because the CSRF protection class uses the secret key. And you have no idea if they actually do gather the secret key inside init app or they do it at runtime as you call the application, like as the application's working on every request. You don't know, so that's why I recommend after the update. Now that you've added the protection, you are going to encounter errors for even your regular forms unless you, you know, supply that CSRF token. I'm not sure if I mentioned the CSRF token, but that's basically what the protection is. This wrap, this extension does all the CSRF token generation and validation for you. And basically all you have to do is do those imports and calls and add this one line. I will zoom in. Input. And with the type hidden, name is the CSRF token, value is a token generation, which is this function is created or supplied by the extension that we just installed and are using. Add this to all your forms. And you know, if you do your forms differently, you can just refer back to this documentation. And now your form should work perfectly fine as if nothing happened, but your those routes will not <laughs> Those routes will not, you know, uh, you know, work like this. It'll be something like this, but it won't be like this. You'll see some ugly message, which is the next part. How do I, you know, I don't want the error. The I don't want ugly messages. I want my users to look at it as if the error has already been planned out. So that's what I'm doing here. I render a template called what is csrf.html. That's all HTML and CSS, which is I'm, I'm not going to show you how to do that, but I'm going to show you how to redirect or how to handle or customize the error response, which is you just do error handler. I have to zoom in again, right? Oh, that's so laggy. I think I just broke. <laughs> I just broke something. Yeah, I don't recommend. I don't recommend zooming often. Anyways, what I have here is I flash an error message because I think education is very important 
especially educating your users. So I say, hey, your CSR Roth token was not found. Were you on a C sketchy website? They're going to say, what is a CSRF token? And, you know, that's why the education is really important for you. And I don't even explain what a CSRF token is, just what CSRF is. But, you know, you, know, you can customize it however you want. Lastly is the exemption. So if you want to exempt something, you do CSRF oh, dot exempt on top of a route. Okay, like this, like a decorator. It, it doesn't, I don't think it matters if it goes above or below. You can look at the examples here. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it goes below or above the app.route. Okay, that is one part. And if you want to exempt an entire blueprint, you can also do that. CSRF.exempt blueprint. Okay, in the app.py. And of course, because we have it in a file, you can import the file in the blueprint, the CSRF variable in another blueprint and exempt views from there. Lastly, I want to demonstrate the attack, which, you know, is not that important, but it really shows you, clarifies what I mean by attack, okay? Now, in our testing, I will print out You know what? <laughs> I got a better idea. Okay, we're just gonna print out the cookie, the cookie keys, okay? Basically, session cookie keys. I'm not gonna explain what a session cookie is, so don't ask me. Actually, you can ask me, but I'm not gonna explain on in this video. It's just too much. But yeah, what is up? I think it's restarted, yeah. It's restarted. And as you can see, the cookies are visible to the server. And that's why the, what's that called? I have no clue why CSRF token is here. I'm pretty sure I did something. Oh yeah, it's in my, <laughs> look at this. It's in my login function. I, I feel pretty bad for this. Oh. Hmm. I have no idea why that's there, actually, so, whatever. You know what, we'll print it out, because I am genuinely curious why that exists. Maybe it's added, if possible. Oh my god. I'm pretty sure I added that, so don't worry about it. Anyways, as you can see, the CSRF is a big deal, and the cookies do get sent, even though the request is actually from another website completely. It's as if the user submitted the form on your own website. If you came here from the Rust videos, don't worry. I have to publish this website and then I get to work on the desktop app. I have, it's the more exciting project. This is not exciting. Creating this was hard, like really hard, but it was, it was something I needed to do so that in the future I can do other stuff. All right. I'll see you guys in the next video.